ALN 4 H and H here. The D Expedition on Easter Island is showing up there on the ham clock. Look at that, 3G0YA. And they are on the 15 meter band right now. And of course there's the green dot there where they are. I clicked, I clicked up here on the ham clock um, on the call sign and the green dot is there uh, for 10 meters you know, it's, it's in some orange, so that'd be 10 meters. I'm noticing they also have a spot on 10 meters uh, for a voice, 28412. But I'm listening to them right now on 15 meters, of course, CW. So I'm going to see if I can work them here on 15 meters CW. I don't have the amp turned on. I'm going to uh, try to work them on um, just using the, the radio here. Let me show you what their, uh, I'm gonna type in their call sign, 3G0YA, hit tab. There, and there's the monument that comes up from the QRZ page, it's the photo uh, from the QRZ page for Easter Island. You know, you can click here and go to the QRZ page, but here we go, so Easter Island, and it's a de-expedition. You see that over there in the lower left? It pulled all that information in from, there we go, from QRZ, because I have my amateur contact log software from N3FJP, really loving this software. I've got it set up to link over to my QRZ, so it backs up all my contacts, go to QRZ as well, can get confirmations that way, puts, puts all my contacts in two places in case I ever have to recover from a failure, catastrophe. That has happened a couple of times over my 42 years of doing this. Uh, all right, so uh, down here to the FTDX 5000. You know, I love the big knobs and uh, and less menus. So this is one of my favorite radios. So they're coming in pretty strong. I mean, look at that, uh, look at that S meter. Now I'm using the internal tuner in the radio to tune my doublet. So I will be putting out barefoot. Uh, power, but this radio's barefoot is 200 watts. Now, I'm not hearing anybody going back to him, so that tells me, and I haven't looked on the spot page other than on the uh, uh, the DX cluster list here for ham clock, but I'm not hearing anybody going back to him, so that tells me that he's probably working a split. So I'm going to long press my split button here, and look over here at VFOB. It's now tuned a kilohertz above where I'm listening. Now I'm gonna turn on that receiver. See if I can hear people working him. Uh, there's definitely somebody transmitting there at 21030.16. That's him. Now I want to listen to see if he goes back to a call sign I hear over here on the B receiver. I heard him send up. Okay, yep, I'm gonna try that.
Yeah, I'm just not hearing anybody on the second receiver. It... Maybe there's somebody. All right, that is a little over 1K up. not working either so I'm, I'll slide up a little more There we go. Did you hear that same call sign? watts might not do it just increasing my words per minute to 26 I'm sending right after he sends a TU thank you. There he just sent a call sign, I mean a signal report, call sign signal report. Another TU. Send another signal report. Thank you. There he is. Got him. Okay. So there you go. Got the Easter Island. And, um, Got him at 2309. <clears throat> now he's fairly strong. If I'm coming in 5.7 now, I'm using amp 2, but that's appropriate. 15 meter band. The S meter is calibrated at 14.2 megahertz with amp 1. So, and I'm running through some tight filtering here. So he's probably 5.9. So I'm, I gave him 5.9, he gave me 5.9. But let me just say, these DX stations it's easy for them to program in the 599, so they give everybody a 599. That's just the way it is. But uh, got the de-expedition on Easter Island. Glad to get that logged. So let me go up here and show you a log. So 3G0YA, 15 meter band, CW, 200 watts, time on 2309, time off 2309. It was quick. Uh, sent him a 599. He sent me a 599. He is on Easter Island and he's a DX Expedition down at the lower left there. You see that? 
And uh, I'm gonna put a little note in here in the comments that I, and by the way, the orange glow you see there, that's a lamp behind me. So uh, uh, in case anybody wonders. So I'm gonna put in here that I, uh, I was, uh, uh, this was FTDX 5000 MP uh, at 200 watts. Of course, that's up there in the power uh, into the 160 meter doublet. Which, if you're watching this and you're new to this, a doublet is a dipole fed with a ladder line. And that one's cut for 160 meters, just like as if I were going to feed it with coax, but I fed it with a technically window line comes into a four to one ballon and then coax over to the rig. And I've featured that in a lot of previous videos. If you're new to this channel, uh, go back and, and in fact, I have a playlist all about the doublet antenna. There are other antenna playlists too. So there you go. The 5,000, such a wonderful rig. So quiet, such a great receiver. So let me recap here what I had set. So I, I long pressed my split button, which automatically set up a 1K up split over here. Now that's because I went into the menu and set it so that quick split is a 1K split. It defaults at 5K because they assume that most people do sideband. So usually when a person's working sideband split, they're, they're gonna be listening 5K up. But I do a lot of CW, so I program the menu for 1K up. And so that the red light here automatically came on indicating it's gonna transmit with VFOB. Now. I was going over here and receiving with VFOB, tuning around just to find out where the stations were who were able to get him, you see? So, and they were, uh, he's at 21028.030, but they, the, the, I got through on 21.029.200. So a little bit more than 1K up, but that's actually pretty close. Some of them will be a one, one and a half, 1.7, I've seen them two and even close to 3K up that they were listening. Now they're probably listening wide. They don't, uh, like me, I have it locked down here. I'm running, I had DNR at 15. I had a 50 Hertz digital width. I had APF on and I've got it set to super narrow. So that's a 10 Hertz wide uh, bandwidth. And then I was using my notch trick here just to knock out some of the rattle there off the filter. So uh, that was the setup. And again, amp two. All right, hey, thanks uh, for watching videos on my channel. I hope you found that one entertaining, helpful. I hope you learned something from it. In order for a channel like this to, to do well, you would need to have advertisers like the manufacturers and all that. But then I would have to be careful about what I say. I wouldn't be able to talk about flaws in the equipment and things like that. And so I'd be censored. And so this channel is run by donations from a team of Patreon members. Patreon's a vehicle that allows you to make donations. Uh, if you like this video and you don't want to join Patreon, you can do a super chat. That's the little heart symbol down below this uh, the video there on YouTube. But if you want to help on an extended basis, there are a lot of a lot of perks for the Patreon team members. I put a lot of content out for them that I don't make public. For the ones who support me on an annual basis, it's S7 or S9 level. There are some uh, documents I've created to help them out with setting up the radios. I have six radios are covered so far in that list. If you Go over to patreon.com slash N4HNH. You'll see in some of the uh, writings there, you'll see the list of radios that I've created uh, what I call menu customizations documents for. Also a couple of FT8 setup guides, but it depends upon your level. If you, if you want to have access to everything, join as an annual S9 VIP, and then you'll have access to everything. All right. Hey, again, thanks for watching the videos. I want to recognize five of those, what I call long haulers. These are Patreon team members that have significantly supported the channel for a year or two or more. I've got some that have supported the channel now for over three years. Without them, you wouldn't have seen this video or hundreds of others. Again, thanks uh, for watching. And this is N4H&H saying 73.